Hello everyone! Hello, hello, hello! It is Teresa from Teresa's Silhouette Spot for all things art, where I love sharing art from my heart and um, teaching y'all how to create some joy in your life through quick and easy art projects. Hey, how is everyone? Welcome to June's PIY, Paint It Yourself, free art tutorial in um, Teresa's Spot for Step-by-Step -step Acrylic Art. How is everyone? We are doing the rooster tonight. I have lots of paint, um, lots of blues. So um, you can use as many blues as you want. You can use white and black to change the U of your blue. Um, totally up to you, but I do have, I have light blue, I have Bahama blue, I have um, this royal ultramarine blue, I have, oh, that's Bahama again. And then I have this um, aqua. So I may or may not use them all. We shall see. Um, if you hop on, let me know where you're watching from and we will get started. Don't forget you guys, um, if you need a break, you can't stay for the whole thing. Um, you ran out of paint, whatever it is, whatever it is. This recording will stay here in the group. It gets uploaded to YouTube and then I will share the link in here and it will be available on replay in the guides just like the other um, two dozen tutorials that are in here. Holy moly. Two dozen. So anyway, um, we will get started. I have my carbon paper. I have my rooster. If you're just watching tonight, sometimes I like to just watch and then gather my supplies and get painting, but totally up to you. You can paint with, or you can paint later. Up to you, up to you. So anyway, I'm gonna take my rooster. I am using, this is my um, art book. Got a lot of stuff going on in here. It is nine by 12. It is a Strathmore multimedia paper. It's nine by 12. So I'm gonna put my rooster up in here somewhere. And I just, I'm just, you know me, I am just eyeballing him. Okay, then I'm gonna grab a piece of scrap tape that I keep on my desk. I'm gonna put it in there and I'm gonna take my um, ratty, very well used piece of graphite paper and slip it right up underneath him. Okay, then I can get a pencil or this metal stylus or I can even use the back of the brush and I'm going to begin tracing in my rooster up here. So I'm gonna add his little beak. I don't always add all the little details. Um, I think I will for his face because his beard or whatever, what is that called, a waddle? Is that a waddle? This is the crown and that's the waddle. It will be a different color than what's on his face. So I'm just going to put in his chubby drumstick legs. I'm gonna put that line in. And I'm first, I'm just going in and I'm doing all the outside. Because I may not even do the entire tail the way it is. Because when I stroke on that my strokes, hey Deb, made it crazy day. Yeah, tell me about it. Um, when I stroke in, the tail feathers will go every which way. But under here, I'll just make a little bit of an uneven line, okay? Then I want this separation here from his, I don't know what they call it. Do we have any, do we have any rooster lovers out here? farmers, whatever. I'm just going to call that the turtleneck. The turtleneck of my rooster. Now I'm doing his little squirny feet. I might have missed a spot. I have to go and check. But before I lift my graphite paper or my tracer, I will come up here and make sure Yeah, I missed part of this foot here. Okay. I did his eye. So I'm just taking a peek and then I'm going to add in just a little bit here just so I know what direction my feathers are going in. 
that's it. I think I'm good. Okay. Now I am going to grab a pencil. Hey, Pam, how are you? Hey, Miss Kimberly, Lolly Doodle. You guys, if you're not following Lolly Do Doodle Studios, you could and should be. That's my friend Kimberly. She's awesomely talented. Um, her and I and our friend Christy paired up last week for the Artfully Pampered, and it was great. Okay, now there was no tracer for this, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. I have this cup. Is it big enough? Yeah, it's big enough. I'm going to put this cup over his feet, okay? And I'm going to just trace around. Do I have a pen? Yeah. That one side didn't work. I'm just going to trace around like that. And so it's going to look like he's standing on top of this post. Okay? That's the top. Here's the round part, and there's that. And then we have this part, the fence post, coming in here. Okay, so we want to do this straight line. We're doing a little bit of a backward C. We have an oval up here for the top of our stump. And don't worry, I'm doing all these pencil lines because we're gonna paint right over it. And then these two down lines. We have our rooster on our stump. Okay, let me move that out of the way. And that is it for now. Let me move my tracers, put my pencil away. Okay. Um, whenever I'm doing something round, I will pick up whatever I have handy to use for the art. If it's a whole circle, that's even better. So I'm gonna get out um, some light blue some Bahama blue and some white. So, I'm gonna be a little generous with these colors because they're for the background. And then my Bahama blue. And I'm gonna get a little bit darker as I go up, but that is good now to start. I have a few brushes here. I have this one inch wash brush, which I'm gonna use for the background. I have this um, kind of medium round brush, which I will use. I have this smaller flat brush, which I may or may not use, and then I have a liner brush. I think I'm going to end up using these three brushes. Um, if you do not have a round brush and you have a small flat brush, that is fine too. We will make it work, okay? So get those over there, I have my towel, I have my water, I am ready to go. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna just load up some light blue on my brush and then I'm gonna dip some of it in white. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna start gently feathering in some of this blue and white. We don't wanna over blend I'm gonna pick up some more of this blue. I'm gonna pick up some more of this white. And I'm gonna come in here. And again, we don't wanna over blend. I'm doing like a, almost like a seesaw motion, like a swinging motion with the white and the blue. Of course, we have to do a line here. Not to over blend, I'm gonna pick up a little bit more white in here and we just wanna get some coverage. And I'm gonna go over his feathers a little bit up here because when we do his feathers, you'll see how then we want them feathery. Of course, they're feathers. And then that's when we will fix the edges of our um, feather. We want our feathers to overlap the background. So I don't mind if I go over what I traced on there a little bit. Okay, some more white. And I'm just feathering this in here like this. A lot of times when I do the backgrounds, I'll do like the crisscross, the X. But in this case, I'm just doing a swoop of like a half a smile. Don't wanna over blend and we want a variety of color in there. Some soft, 
blue, some darker blue, some lighter blue, okay? Now I am going to start picking up some of this Bahama blue and the blue that I had in here. And I'm gonna start doing the same thing. And I want the Bahama blue more towards the top. I'm gonna to use my brush on the um, chisel edge to outline my tail. And then I'm just gonna go back in here, pick up some light blue, some Bahama blue, and swish in here our blues. My computer, if you hear the humming, my computer seems to be running a little hot. I don't know why. Um, so you might hear that background. I apologize if it's annoying. Okay. Now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to get this. I just want to go around and each of these I'm gonna pull up. So his crown, his cone, whatever, makes all these points. So I'm just sticking the edge of my brush in there and pulling up just to get in all these nooks and crannies and get around. And then I'll go back in and fill in like that. Oh, picked up some white, that's okay. And again. We want, when we get to our rooster, it doesn't matter that I'm going over the line. We just needed the shape of our rooster. It doesn't matter because when we paint in our rooster's feathers, we want our feathers to overlap our background. And we want it to have a real feathery look. And we will get that. when we come back with our feathers, so it doesn't matter if we, oh, oh love that blue, me too. Um, so it doesn't matter if we go over it a little bit. It's totally fine. And I think that might be good. The sample was a little bit darker in the backdrop, but I think I like these colors just the way they are. Might add a little bit more white down here. For some reason, I think it's um, warm in here. For some reason, and it really, it depends on when we blend, I've said this before, it's easier, when you blend, you want white on wet, wet on wet, not white, wet on wet. And that has a lot to do with my lights. It could have a lot to do with the temperature of my home and the humidity. So if my paint is drying quicker than yours, hey Carol, thank you. Carol, it was so annoying. It was really, really rough, really rough. Um, anyway, so depending on the moisture in your house, the temperature of your house, um, your paint may dry quicker or slower. So blending always needs to be wet on wet. You want your surface wet, you want your brush wet in order to blend. And your paint is gonna dry. Oh, sorry, Pam. Don't forget, the video will stay in here. I'll pop up the link for the YouTube video and it stays in here, it goes in the um, guides. So it really depends. You want everything to be wet. You want what's on your brush to be wet. You want what's on your surface to be wet. Sometimes if you have to dip your brush in a little water, feel free to do so. And I am now going to wash my brush and I'm gonna put out a little bit of red. Just a dab, just a dab will do ya. All right, and I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna use my liner brush because this is a very small area. So I'm gonna come in here with my liner brush. I'm gonna get a really nice amount of red. One second, I always forget to do this. I'm glad it wasn't totally late. <laughs> anyway, okay. I got a little bit of red on my brush. I'm gonna rest my hand in my rooster where it's still not wet. And I'm gonna start filling in his cone. Okay. I can put my hand into his body to rest my wrist. 
because I haven't painted that yet. Pick up a little bit more red paint. And I just want to come in here and fill all of this in with this nice bright red. So yes, so thank you, Carol. If you guys were watching, um, I moved my daughter to Nashville this weekend. We drove down last Friday. Um, and then I'm gonna paint the, the waddle under his chin beak here, red also. Um, my daughter moved to Nashville, got her all settled in her apartment everything between the movers and whatnot could not have gone smoother until it was time for me to come home and i went to the airport and found out that my first of all my flight was canceled and i hadn't even gotten a text and there i was at the airport and they're like oh we'll just put you on this other flight easy peasy i was like awesome easy peasy i had a class that night at my library and i was like oh they're just gonna put me on this other flight that's awesome and lo and behold, there was issue after issue, late, late, late. Oh, yes, I should. And anyway, late, 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 long story short, um, ended up stopping in Philadelphia. I live in New York, ended up stopping in Philadelphia for fuel after our two hour flight turned into a four hour flight, then we needed fuel. And when we stopped in Philadelphia, um, we never left. And my husband had to drive all the way three hours to Philadelphia to get me. It was awful. Yes, did you see my picture with the Dolly mural in Nashville? Yes, it was, it was really cool. Okay, so we got the waddle and we got the crown. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of white, tiny, tiny bit of white. And I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna add in just some white into sections up here in the crown. And the white that I used is plenty. I'm not even gonna pick up any more. I just wanna add a little bit of texture up in here so it's not just all one color. And you can see now how the front is a little bit softer and the back gets a little darker. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here with the waddle. We don't want it pink. That might be a little too pink because there's a lot less. But we just want to add a different shade by picking up a little bit of the white. And then I am going to take a lot of white on my brush and make this very light pink color with my dirty round red, my dirty red brush. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna paint around his eye and down into here. So I just painted a little bit light pink around his eyeball in between the crown and the waddle. Uh, yes, he did, Carol. My husband is awesome. He did come get me and um, it took us like three hours to get home. Okay, I just, I saw this spot up in here and I can't, I don't want to fix it with the red, so I'm just going to add a little bit of blue in there. Okay? So that's it. Pay no attention to me. All right. So I'm just going to put red back on my brush because I want to have a dirty brush when I go to my yellow. All right? So I'm going to get out some of my bright, bright yellow. Okay. And now you can use um, your round brush or you can use your liner brush, which actually I am gonna use my round brush, so I'm gonna dirty this one up now with some red. Okay? So now I have red on my brush, but we want to go into the yellow. And we don't wanna get all of our yellow blended and mixed up, so I'm just gonna go over here to the side of my pile, and I'm just gonna start putting in these little tiny strokes little tiny strokes not even longer than the brush itself maybe a half inch long 
Okay, pick up some yellow on my dirty brush and I am layering in little by little, picking up yellow each time on my dirty brush and adding in the feathers up here for the top of him. Okay, if you want, I quickly need some of this. I missed the first part. Did you use two blues? I did. I used these two blues. I had this light blue and this um, Bahama blue and some white. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to have, I like having the contrast, and I feel like there wasn't enough dirty on my brush, so I just added in a little bit more red up here. And I'm just using, I'm holding the brush really far down and I'm just pulling in these little strokes, little tiny strokes overlapping each other. If you want more yellow, you can come back and we can go in and we can add a layer of yellow bright, bright yellow in there later ourselves. Hmm? We want to have this come down the back area a little bit. Not too much. Um, just to where maybe the tail starts to swoop up. And follow it through maybe about an inch and a half. Okay. Now with my dirty brush still and the red and the yellow, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to paint in his little chicken feet. Don't worry if you go out of the lines a little bit. We will clean all that up when we get to, oh, you know what I, oh, that's okay. It's gonna be fine. When we get to the um, wood part, that will all get fixed. So with the yellow and the red, I'm making a bit of orange. If you had orange, you could use orange. Sometimes I hate, I don't want to give you guys like a, a list of colors you know a foot long so and especially if you only need like a drop of orange there's no reason why we can't just mix up a little bit of red and yellow and make some orange okay. I did notice something I'm gonna wash my brush I noticed that I don't have a line here so I'm gonna have to pick up a little bit of blue and get it in there And depending on how you drew your stump, you may not have this problem. Okay? Okay. All right, I'm gonna wash that again. I'm gonna go back to my liner brush. And now I'm going to just take some fresh yellow and paint in his beak. We might have to do two coats for this. Yellow is one of those colors that is very translucent. So we might have to do that again. All right. So, ooh, yellow, beak and feet and eye. And we're also gonna paint in the eye. We're gonna paint in the whole middle of the eye with our fresh yellow. And again, we may have to come back with a second coat. We shall see. All right, I'm gonna wash my brush. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, thank you. Okay, now, so I have step-by-step. Step. So when I paint these things, and um, if you follow me, well, you do follow me, obviously. So sometimes my kits come with step-by-step -step instructions. Sometimes they come with a video tutorial. Sometimes they come with both. So when I paint these things, I make myself 
little notes. And it really, it helps me, A, so when I go back and type up the um, complete step-by-step -step instructions, and B, it helps me so when I'm painting with you guys, I can follow along to my notes, and then this way, I don't forget anything. Because if I forget something while I'm painting, I can go back, I'll go back and fix it, whatever. I really hate to forget something when I'm teaching it and it, it goes step by step and it should be in an order, orderly fashion. And then I leave something out and it kind of messes you guys up, which it's easy enough to fix. It's easy enough to go back to and take care of, but I like to be organized and go in order when um, I'm showing you guys how to do this. Okay, so I have my notes and there we go. So I'm gonna go back to my round brush. I've washed it out really well. I'm gonna dry it off. And I have, I added now turquoise, which I may or may not use, and I added in this dark blue, okay? So I'm gonna pick up some of this dark blue on my brush. I'm gonna come over here on the edge, and I'm gonna pick up some of the white. And I'm gonna go in here, and I'm gonna start the same thing we did with his neck feathers, with his turtleneck, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna start adding in here these little tiny, I'm making notes if I find that. Oh good, I can't wait to see Deb. Little, little tiny strokes. I'm using the tip of the brush. I'm not having too much paint on here. And I'm just putting in little tiny brush strokes. If you can see mine, you will see it's textured. You'll see different colors of the white and the blue. I can pick up a little bit more white and start adding in a little bit more white up in here. And we want these brush strokes to be a little bit curved. So presumably like these swoop down. These are on the center of the chest. So these are gonna go in a rounded motion And I'm going swooping back and forth just like I did with the background. Pick up a little more blue. Okay. And then down here for his little chubby legs. And we want, we don't want harsh lines around his legs. You know how we meet outline and then we go in and we fill in our outline when we draw other things and we want to like, you know, have a nice outline, a nice smooth surface. No, when we're doing our chicken, it's okay if we have some of his feathers going out a little bit, going over the top of his orange legs, his little feet. You want that. You don't want smooth, exact, tight edges. And I'm just continuing picking up blue and following the curve in here. These will go up and down, but then above his legs, it's a little bit rounded. And it really makes a difference. So we have these swooping in, and then we have the legs going down. Okay. And I'm gonna start now adding in these going this way. Pick up a little bit white. A little more white and very light layered strokes. Light. I have my pinky, um, not my pinky, my pointer finger floating around out here. And I'm just pulling in with this round brush, little strokes. And again, we don't want a harsh line down here. Oops. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna pick up a lot of blue and I want to follow up in here and swoop down to a point. And now this is 
the beginning of our tail. Okay. I'm just going to make a lot of pressure. Now, instead of these little tiny strokes, I have a lot of paint. I'm putting a lot of pressure. I'm putting my brush next to each other and I'm swooping. Okay. And I'm going to pick up some of this turquoise and my blue. I have them both on here. And again, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to put my brushes next to each other. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put some pressure and swoop. Okay, some blue, some of this uh, Bahama blue come in here and swoop. Some of the Bahama blue again and swoop. And we're just adding these tails tail feathers. I think I want to come out a little further. I think I'm going to come off the page. There we go. I like that better. Okay. So pick up. I'm going to come in. I'm going to come off the page. And I'm just going to keep layering and layering in here. Ooh. And now I'm going to pick up some of this um, teal color that I have. And I just want a little bit of contrast under here. I still have a dirty brush. And I'm adding it in down at the bottom. Ooh. So back up here. And you can add in. You can keep doing this. It's actually kind of mesmerizing to make it darker, lighter, more green, more blue, whatever you want to do. And you want the feathers to look, um, you don't want it to be blended in. You don't want it one solid color. You want the feathers to all look separate. Okay. And I'm going to wash my brush. And now that our neck and whatever you want to call it is dry, I'm going to go back in here to the yellow. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of white with my yellow. And I'm just going to come back in here and I want to just add in, pick up more yellow, some highlight. So I'm going to go over the blue a little bit. I want some nice, fresh yellow. And I'm just adding in a few more layers. You can see how cool now the yellow really pops in there. Maybe some white. I don't want too much white, but just some highlights and little, little tiny strokes. I'm holding the brush way down far. I'm not using my pointer and it's just little tiny strokes. And now this is bringing our yellow, our turtleneck, his neck colors, whatever it is, over the blue. Okay. Got a lot of nice shading going on in here. It's a little darker and then it's lighter. And now I'm just gonna pick up some white and add just a little bit of white to his tail. Okay. Let me go in and wash my brush. So what'd you have for dinner, Carol? We had chicken cutlet. I made chicken cutlet and a big salad and it was so good. I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow. I want to do the second coat on his beak. And a second coat in his eye. There we go. All right. Let 
Did the tail, highlights, okay. Put out a little bit of black. And some brown now. Okay, and I'm gonna go back to my bigger brush to start with. Okay. Thank you, Deb. He's really cool, isn't he? So cool. And I love, I love all the blues. I don't know why. Well, I should know why. So you guys all know, you've been following me. This patina. Patina has been my favorite all-time color. I've been in a couple of challenges lately. Artfully Pampered was all about the beach. It was all the blues. Um, I did the cactus, charming cactus. That was all blue. I did that owl, the cute owl. It was all blues. I don't know what it is with me and the blues lately. So that be a fresh corn. Oh, yum, 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 Carol. Love it, love it. Awesome, good for you. Okay, yeah, so we had um, chicken cutlets, which I broiled, not fried, but they still had egg and bread. And then um, big salad. And I made my own dressing with salt and pepper and lemon and olive oil. Okay, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white. Okay, because we don't want it solid. And I just wanna define where my stump is for now, okay? And when we do this part of the stump, we're pulling down. Pick up a little bit more brown, we're pulling down. And again, we don't want to over mix our colors. I have a little white in there. And there we go, there's our stump. Okay, then we're gonna come in here and I'm gonna make this round part. And again, pick up a little bit of white. And this time, we're gonna paint this wood, this wood block, this way, the post, or actually the rail, this would be the post, this would be the rail. And we're gonna paint it horizontal. Then we have our fence post, and it's a little crooked. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I can see it, so I have to come in there and straighten it out. Okay, so we want our post horizontal, and we want our stump part, or whatever. So rail, we want this part horizontal. We want, yes, we freehanded the stump, and I showed you how. I used, um, the top of this cup just to get the top part and then I made it into an oval. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to add a little bit of black onto my brush. I might have to, you know what, I might have to get a smaller brush. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paint in, but yes, I think I'm going to get a smaller brush. So let me get some brown. And you can use, you know what, I'll use the brown brush because I don't want to keep confusing you guys. I don't need to use that flat brush. I'll come back in here and get this round brush that we've been using. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of black. And I'm going to go in here. I'm going to paint the top of the stump. Or the post or whatever. I guess it's more of a, I keep calling it a stump, but I guess it's a fence, fence post. But it could be a cut off stump. I don't know. And don't worry if you get around his feet. Adding a little bit of black to my brown. We just want the top of it to be a little bit darker. You wanna be able to tell. And once I get it all filled in, then we're going to change our brush strokes to make the top look round. But right now I'm concentrating on getting in and around the feet and just filling in the area. Between here, like I said, depending on how, where you put your fence, you might have not have any blue between his little feet and legs, or you might have a lot. 
just be conscious of his feet and the background and everything. Okay, and again, I'm just holding my brush down low. Okay, now I'm all filled in. I'm going to use my brush and I'm going to make my strokes on the top rounded. Okay, filling that all in a little rounded. We have plenty of chickens and fences in Long Island. I just get confused when I'm trying to paint and talk and explain at the same time. <laughs> okay, while I have this dirty, dark, blackish, brownish paint on here, I'm going to come in here. I want to make this here a little bit shaded where they connect. And then I don't want a harsh line there. So I'm pulling out the dark and I'm picking a little bit of shade on the bottom part of the rail. Okay. I'm gonna do the same thing with this dark. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna add a little bit of shading vertically to the side and then just a little bit underneath here. Okay. Actually, this one should be a little bit more like that. Okay. There we go. That's better. Sometimes it's funny, you guys. I can see things better by looking up in... Um, the screen that I can when I'm painting it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my liner brush. I'm going to use the back of my liner brush. I'm going to dip in the paint and I'm going to give our chicken an eyeball. And I'm going to get out my greens. little bit of green. I have some dark green and I have some light green. You guys can use whatever green you have laying around. So we're also going to use some of the yellow and the white as well. So now I have my liner brush. And now you can do this this way or sometimes I like to turn mine upside down. I'm going to get the dark green. I'm going to come in here and get some of the light green. And I'm going to start adding some of these grasses. Dark green, light green, and adding in the grass on the bottom. And I'm just pulling and like flicking. We want them to crisscross. You want them to be a little narrower on top. I'm picking up both colors of paint. Every time I go back for paint, I get the dark, I get the light, and then I come back and I pull in some of this grass. If you don't want to do it upside down, you don't have to. Do whatever works for you and whatever you are comfortable with. Try and make them curve a little bit and crisscross. Some can even cover over the stump a little bit. It doesn't have to be totally full coverage. You can put as much in here or as little in here as you want. You can still have some sky to the background. And then up here, because it's just peeking over the top of the fence, I'm just pulling them up here. I'm using my little pinky, because these aren't as long, to make some anchor and I'm pulling them up. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of yellow now and add some yellow in. Sometimes I wait, I didn't add the yellow in at the same time because I wanted my greens to settle in a little bit. 
but if they dry, then you can come back in and start adding in the different shades and the different colors. light green okay I want this to be a little bit more filled in up here so I'm gonna drag my brush along the top of the rail top of the railing I got it right the rail and the post okay and then I'm gonna pull this up so you don't see that line and now you just see the grasses sticking up, okay? Put a few more in here. And you want them all different heights, all different widths, all different textures. Some are thinner, some are thicker. It's all good, okay? So now we have our grasses in, we have our rooster done, and I am going to wash my brush. I'm gonna go back to my little round one. Okay. And I'm going to get some brown and I'm going to paint these little tiny brown ovals in here. I'm going to paint in our, um, the centers for our daisies. Okay. Oh, just put my hand in the paint. Be careful. And that's it. They just look like they're floating around out there. Wash my brush. I want to turn my paint plate around because I want to get, I have plenty of white here, but that around there is real contaminated with the blue. So I'm going to come over here where I have nice fresh white. And I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to start painting in my daisy petals. We want our daisy petals to be a little narrower on the bottom, a little narrower on top, and thicker in the middle. That one's gonna have to go up the page. So I'm just putting in like a backward C, a frontward C, and then filling it in. This is a very easy way to paint a daisy. Again, just a these flowers are a little abstract. There's nothing realistic about them, but we do know that they're daisies. There are many ways to paint daisies. This is just one way. I'm gonna add a little bit one in here. Then this one, this one is yellow, but you guys know, I always talk about how translucent the yellow is. So this one we're gonna paint in, we're base coating it in white first. And then we will come back and we will add yellow over the white and you'll see how that flower is really gonna pop. And then again, we're gonna go back in here and paint this one in white. I think we may have painted these daisies on something before. And I'm just doing these little half smile, half little frowny faces, skinny on the bottom, and then skinny up top where they meet. Okay. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit brown and I wanna fix in my center. Okay. Wash my brush. Oh, got a little white on there. Ooh. Now while I'm doing this white. I want to come in here and I want to just add a little bit of highlight to the top of the railing here. I want to add a little highlight 
coming down the post. Get a little bit of highlight up in here. And then I'm going to follow the circle, almost dry brushing, hardly any white on my brush, and dragging to make the swirls in the top. So I picked up a little bit of white. I did some here, here, here. And then while my brush was practically dry, I just came in here and dry brushed. I don't want to keep going over it because then it'll be too much. Some white to make the circle. I want my centers a little darker, so I'm going to pick up a little bit more brown. that. I'm going to go back to my yellow, a nice fresh yellow over here. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to just come in here. Now you can leave this flower white. You can make all your daisies yellow. You can make your daisies pink. Totally up to you, whatever you want to do. And I'm just coming in here and I'm going over the white. So now this flower is going to be nice and bright and yellow. And then I also want to go over the white ones. We want our flowers to be really vibrant. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's nice that they look a little textured. So I'm just adding in a few strokes of the white over the white where we were. And it's just making it nice and white. But you can see my brush strokes. You can see how some of the petals are a little lighter. Some are a little darker. And that's okay. It, it just adds texture and variety. You don't want everything all solid. Okay. So, there we go. I'm going to wash this. I'm going to mix a little bit of black, just a little bit of black with a little bit of green over here because I want a different green. I want a darker green. And I'm going to put in a stem a stem and a stem. Okay. Just want to get out a little, little, little bit of purple from my hyacinths. And back to my liner brush. Now hyacinths are like cone shaped. They're narrower on the top than they are on the bottom. They kind of are triangular. So we're going to start up here, and we're just going to dab. I'm using my liner brush, and I'm dabbing, and I'm getting a little bit wider as I go down. It's okay to have space. And I'm just dab, dab, dabbing. If you wanted to put the shape in here first with a pencil or a pen or some chalk, you can do that. I'm going around the daisy and right into the grasses. So if you wanted to like just pencil in or chalk in so you don't get carried away and your eye knows where to go and you're following that track, you can do that. Okay. I'm going to come up in here 
and I'm going to add another one and again we want to start out narrow and I'm just lightly dabbing getting it a little bit wider as I go but not too wide and just dab dab dabbing gonna get a little bit in there and it goes like behind there and you can put another one over there if you wanted a smaller one maybe one going off the page whatever you wanted to do hmm. now I'm gonna rinse my brush but now I'm going back to the white but I'm gonna use the back of my brush now I'm gonna pick up the white and now I'm gonna use the back of my brush and add a little bit of white randomly to my flowers. Using the dabbing with the brush gives the base a little bit of some texture and not full coverage. But then you add these pops of white with the back of the brush and it just brings it all together. There we go. So there's my hyacinth. So with my, this is totally optional. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black on my liner brush and I wanna come in here and I wanna give a little bit of outline to the eye. If that's hard for you, you can skip it um, if it's hard for you, you can get a paint pen to do this part. It has to be a very thin paint pen. It's totally up to you. I did a little bit of the eye, and now I'm going to come in here and put a little line for his beak. Okay. I want to add a little bit of black shading under his feet on top of the post, the fence post. A little more. Got a little bit of shading under there, a shadow. That's it. little bit of black here for the lines a little bit of black around the top of the stump just a little not like we usually outline everything and I think I think that's it I'm trying to see if I forgot anything. Nope, there's my picture. You can add a little bit more white to the stump if you want. Oh, you know what I want to do? I want to add a little bit of white under here to his breastplate. Not too much. There we go. Just a little bit of highlight in there. And then I think I want to add a little bit of dark in here to my liner brush just to make a little bit more contrast. There we go. And I think, let's do this. Ta -da! And I think he's crowing now. He sure is. Cock-a-doodle-doo.